All right, let's do some dumb football questions here. You can always submit via the comment section on the O-Line Committee YouTube channel. No question is too dumb to be brought up on this show. Let's start with, let's see here. Let's start with Pablo, who wants to know, I, I wonder how it is in the NFL where one player doesn't get along with another player. Or more, more generally, how does it work when and if you have friction between players and they just don't like each other behind the great. scenes? This is a great question. You know, you'd be surprised at how professional two guys that don't like each other in the NFL can really be. Because there's a lot of guys that don't like each other. I mean, a lot of guys don't fucking like each other, whether it be because we're just around each other all day. And by week eight, you're like, I'm so sick of hearing that stupid fucking laugh coming from that corner over there. And I, that group that eats breakfast every day, I already know who the fuck it is. Like, you just, but all of a sudden you'll see that guy and you'll be, oh, hey, what's up, man? You good? You feel good? All right, man. Good luck this week. Like, there's just something about it. And now there is times where there's guys that you fucking hate. And you're just like, you walk by each other. And it's almost like you don't see them. They don't see you. You cannot bring tension to that, though. Because if you guys become a problem, and I don't give a fuck if you are the A-star player or the C-star players, you will get cut. You will both get cussed the fuck out in front of everybody because at the end of the day, you are just as worthless as the rest of us. And if you guys start battling it out and creating this line in the sand for the team, coaches see that quickly and they're like, end this shit now. Like if that coach is coming to me constantly like, hey, I hear there's a rift between so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. Yeah, little shit. End it now. End it fucking now before it becomes a bigger issue. When I've seen big, the small things turn into really big things. They turn into big fights. Fists were thrown. Walls were broken. Team was divided. Like it just turns into a problem. And coaches are really good at seeing it and kind of trying to sidestep it or at least talk you off the ledge of fighting. And I will say this there's a lot of fights between O line and D line that's hilarious because they'll be knocked down, drag out. And then once practice is over, you'll be in the locker room like, hey, man, we're cool, right? And they'll be like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, for sure, man. We're good. We're good. Like you're like, all right, at least, at least we know how to handle our business. The problem is when you get into a fight with like a DB or a linebacker or a receiver, because then those guys, they don't fight fair. They're just they're constantly talking shit. And you're like, God damn, shut the fuck up. Like D linemen are like, yo, we squash this shit. It's over. You're like, all right, appreciate it. Okay. See you tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, you can't carry any negative tension into the locker room. Like, you can sit in your own line room when the door shuts and be like, can you believe that idiot? Right? Like, or be like, that dude is so dumb. Like, I wish he would get ran over by a car. Right? Like, That's all those a things. Lot. <laughs> but, like, you know, but then at the end of the day, like, it's exactly like Boone said. You're like, but we need them to win on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Right? So we will tolerate them. Right? And <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to bring them over to my house. I don't have to invite them to family, like, Christmas like mm -hmm. and again I if he got hit by a car tomorrow I would be like ah so sad but like if he does this thing on Sunday so be it we tolerate him we move on yeah I, this is a good follow-up here actually from Tony Owens can one bad teammate tank an entire season oh yeah it yes and no it, uh, depending on yes it depends on it depends on the level of the player on and if he's in that tier of uncuttable or not Right, because mm -hmm. there there's a tier on every team that like they're untouchables. I was assuming like, that was the question. By the way, he was an uncuttable player because if, I mean, if you're just a shit bag, if you're just a shit bag and you're just oh, you're like, out. Low, you're, yeah, they're cutting you. You're fucking gone. Again, the, the next question they're going to ask you is aisle or window, right? Like, where, where do you want to sit on the plane? Yeah, let's right? say but, you're you're a star, you're a starter and you're one of the oh, two yeah. highest paid guys. It'll fuck it all up. It'll it fuck the screw, whole thing it up. It could screw the whole thing up. Especially when they start talking and then like sometimes they'll just start ranting out loud and they'll be like, and the quarterback can't throw the ball. And then a couple guys will be like, he's not wrong. Quarterback can't throw the ball. Why the fuck are <laughs> we throwing the ball so much? And all of a sudden it's like, ah, defense can't stop a fucking nosebleed. And you're like, yeah, they can't. Can't stop the run game. What the fuck, man? You guys are out there a lot. You're not giving us a lot of chance. Like instantly things start spreading. And that's why coaches are quick to be, I think when they, Highlights have kind of become a thing of the past, and I think coaches are sick of sucking each other off and being like, this is great, where now it becomes a low-light session. Let's talk about how we all fucked up. Defense, this is where we fucked up. Special teams, this is where we fucked up. Offense, this is where we fucked up. So that you all get the feeling that you're stupid and you suck, and there's more to be worked on. Like, no one person can point a finger. Now, I've been on teams where that is a very biased situation, and the fuck-ups only come from one side of the ball, and that's when the fingers start to get pointed. 2016 right <laughs> and you're like hey get that finger out of my fucking face there's not a lot we can do and it's like 
what finger? <laughs> what finger? Am I bothering you? Am I bothering you? I'm not and touching you. No, I'm, I'm not, not touching, touching you. That's exactly what it was the entire year. And that instantly can cause friction because people start getting upset. And you're like, hey, you need to calm down. Like, it's it's okay. Sometimes it's harder when it comes from the coaches. There's not a lot of ways you can chill a coach out. You can chill the players out by being like, hey, man, you need to chill. Half the team hates you, and they're going to fucking waterboard you if you don't stop. Right? Like a coach, you just kind of got to be like, please, please stop. Like, we get it. We're fixing it. We're trying really fucking hard. And then all of a sudden, they don't. And you're like, it's just going to get worse. It's just going to keep going out because then all of a sudden, the team starts hating each other. And one side hates the other side. And the other side's like, please don't hate us. We're trying so hard. We're doing all we can. And they're like, you guys are terrible. And you're like, ah. And then the worst is when the teammate that is like cussing everybody out and getting mad goes in there and then fucks it up. And then you're like, well, now this just isn't going to help anything. Like, it's just a mess, dude. That's why coaches, the great coaches, they see this coming from a long ways away. Hey, I noticed someone had an attitude today. What's that about? Yeah, he's really pissed he's not getting the ball. Well, tell him to shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, hey, coach said shut up. Don't want to hear it anymore. Neither do we. Okay, good. Well, like, the, other, the other side of this coin, too, though, is if a star player tries to turn the team against the coaches. Right. If a star player comes in and be like, these idiots don't know what they're talking about or like, we're not running that. Why would we put that in that? What a waste of our time. Like I've seen that too. And that can be, if you have a young team and you've got an older player that like is bagging on your position coach or something like that, mm. like then the young player's like, Oh yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Screw that guy. And then it just snowballs and you lose the room. You lose the team. I like covered that. a team where that, that kind of happened with the, oh, the yeah. 2009, 10 Vikings where Brett, Brett Favre came in as a 39 year old and Brad Childress was the head coach and the offensive mastermind and wanted plays run a certain way. And Brett would get up to the line of scrimmage. And there's a clip even that I don't know how it made like the NFL's, you know, sounds of the week or whatever. This is from 15 years ago. But there's a clip of like Brett runs. The Brett checks something at the line of scrimmage that you're not supposed to check. Don't do it. And and it's a touchdown. And he's coming back, jumping up, high fiving. And Brad walks up to him and he's like, "What happened? Like, what? Why did you change that?" He's like, "We score a touchdown, coach." You know. But he was just kind of mocking him. And the next year, oh, yeah. the wheels came off. He got fired five weeks into the season. You know, it is boy, dude. And, and to be fair to all the young players that are listening, because I know there are some that are listening. That is an unwinnable situation for you. If you are yes. a young player <laughs> and you get an old school player, especially like someone with the credibility of Brett Favre that comes in and is like, these coaches are fucking stupid. Yeah. Your instant response is, yeah, they are. Yeah, for they sure. Are. They are yeah. fucking stupid, yeah. aren't they? Like, Dude, I remember being young and hearing that a lot. And they were like, it's fucking stupid, isn't it? And they'd look at you and be like, so dumb. <laughs> Please, God, don't let the coach have heard me say that. Please, I didn't say that out loud. Like, you, but you, if you don't like, agree. Oh, yeah, those dudes are idiots. Okay, he's not in here. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> do, do the quick like, hey. is the door shut? Because you want the boys in the room to love you more than anything. And if you go, I don't know, guys. I think they're doing okay. Shut up, rookie. I'll stab you. Oh, yeah. They're gonna, <laughs> you're not going to get invited to barbecues. You're not going out with them anymore. Pre-game meals, not a fucking chance. Like, you agree with the group or you are not a part of the you're group. Getting, uh, you're getting fine for Stockholm Syndrome. Love thy and captor. I, oh, for yep. sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah hey i'm not kidding man there have been some times and when i was young it was crazy because i had dudes like takio spikes and manny lawson and i mean it was insane and they would be like this is fucking crazy and he'd be like just like jay said <laughs> looking around like is anyone looking yeah it is it is i know I know. Yeah, Dude, the best it, advice I can give a young player is sit in the corner, keep your head shut down, the fuck up. and just speak when spoken to. Right? If those start conversations start coming up on the team plane, on the go bus, down, go the down, room, just start open the playbook, watch some film, click the iPad on, and be like, "Oh, sorry, I wasn't listening." Like, just <laughs> chill out. Because if you get yourself wrapped up in that as a young player, and all of a sudden it gets back to the coach, oh. We've heard it get back to the coach too. We've don't get me wrong. There are times in camp where you've just had it and you are like blowing up and you're like, fuck everybody. Damn. He doesn't know what he's doing. Like those are different times. It's hot. You're hungry. Guys are kind of letting you go. It's when you do the, like you have a quiet meeting in a closed door room and you're like, Hey, we need to talk. And you're like, these guys are fucking stupid. Like that's when you need to be like, coach said, I need to go get the coffee. I'm going to go, uh, <laughs> Snacks look like they're not I refilled. 
I'm going to go get new snacks. I don't even know if I've told you this story, but I've had this happening, and I'm definitely not naming names here. Never. But I got a text from a head coach that said, hey, can you meet me for breakfast tomorrow morning? And this is in the middle of the season. And I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, you said yeah, head coach? Head coach. And I was like, you yeah, snitch. for sure. Yeah, what's going on? Like, right? And I'm like, so I get there. He's like, what time? I was like, oh, I'm in there at 7. He goes, I'll be in there. And so I show up at 6.45, and he's already waiting for me. And when I sit down, he goes, all right, I need to ask you a question. I was like, okay. He goes, what do you think about this O-line coach? Like, truly, what do you think about him? Oh, my God. And I'm like, uh, he's like, it's, it's, you're not in trouble. Like, you're not in trouble. Like, I'm just, I'm trying to be a good evaluator, trying to feel like, I just really want to know. And I, I kind of went in my piece of like, you know, I think he's a really good vets coach. You know, I think he does a really nice job with the, the structuring. I think he's a little limited on the development side with young players. Like, you know, but I was like, I really love the guy. Like, he's giving me opportunity. Like, you're, it's such a weird position to be in because you're trying to be honest. But at the same time, you're like, that's my line coach. Like, I don't know what to do. Isn't he only asking you that question? Because he's, he's not to asking me. A... To, he, he doesn't want me to give him a glowing review, <laughs> right. right? Like he's not asking me to be like, "Oh, I love this dude. I die for this guy." Right? That'd like, be a uh, that'd be a sociopathic move as a head yeah. coach to like grab one offensive. But that's lineman the kind of thing. Is that as an old lineman again? Remember, I was never the guy, right? right? Like I was never the guy in the room. Like and 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 I had multiple line coaches tell me like I was more the glue guy in the room. Like I was the temperature gauge. Like they could always kind of come to me and be like, how's the room? How are things? You're kind of like, you're a smart player. You know what you're doing. How are guys? And so I'm having this conversation with this, this head coach. I'm like, you know, he's this, he's like, okay, I really appreciate that. And I was like, yeah, but at the end of the day, like, I don't want to get anyone fired. Like, that's not why I'm here. Like I want to play and they, I don't care who my coach is. And he's like, no, no, no. So two weeks later, I'm sitting in there at the end of the, at the end of the day, I used to stay after, and watch film after meetings and I do all my studying at the facility so that when I got home I could truly just be home with with my wife and so like I'm sitting there by myself throwing through my study and doing my thing and the O-line coach walks in the room and I'm like oh hey what's up and he sits in the front of the room puts his feet up on the table like he always does and he goes what do I need to do better what do I need to do better Jeremiah I was like what do you mean he's like I just feel like I'm not developing these young guys well enough like, I just feel like, I mean, there's some developmental things that aren't, that like aren't going our way. We have some young players and, you know, it's kind of been talked in the building that we got to develop guys better. And I'm just sitting there like, please, put uh, the words uh, out of your uh, mouth and be yeah. like, yeah, I heard you didn't like I developed guys well. Yeah. And like, I was just like, I don't know. He's like, why are you the only one sitting in here? Where's the young guys? And I was like, uh, I don't know. I always do this coach. Like I've done this my entire career. Like, and, and then like, sure as shit, two days later, guess who's watching film with me after practice? All the practice. rookies, all yep. the second year guys, like in the whole thing. And so that just goes back to like, you never know what these coaches will do. Cause again, I was put in an impossible situation, right? Like if I sit there and lie to the head coach and be like, this dude's the best guy ever. He's, he's never been better. I mean, he's going to look at me like, Hmm, but at the same time, like if I be honest, then like, did I get a guy fired? Am I like, that's, oh, it's an so impossible tough, situation to be in as a player. That's not so an untouchable tough. player. Right? I agree. We talked about that. I was not an untouchable player by any means of the imagination any year that I was in the NFL. Right. And so it was just this really, and so that goes back to like, can one player kill it? Yes and no. Right. Yeah. Maybe not even out of bad intentions, not have any bad intentions at all, but you just sit there and say, Hey, this is what I think. This is where I'm at. I've, I've done all these things. You know, it's a weird place to be, but yeah, that was, that was an interesting, I mean, I called my wife. I was like, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> like I called my agent. I was like, I don't, I don't know what just happened. Like, what did you, what did your agent say? Be honest. He goes, be honest. He goes, at the end of the day, like you are a pawn. And like, if you're honest with the head coach, like he has more weight than the positional coach. Like, and if he loves you, then he'll love you more. Like if he trusts you with this, that's a good thing. Right. Like, and you know, it's like, he was basically just like, listen, you got to look out for number one, right? That This is the NFL. You got to look yep. out for yourself. Right? I, I, you, I want to flip this scenario, but like put Boone in that room instead so that he can just tee off on this coach. and get No, so I actually run. had that happen twice in my career. Two owners actually came to me and asked me about the head coaches. And they it was in their office that they were like, hey, we need to talk. And I was like, I have not done anything bad. And they're like, no, we just need to talk. <laughs> immediate quick. reaction. Like, <laughs> immediate. I'm, I'm good. Do you want to look through that. my phone? Do you want my I haven't tax been fined in a long like... time. I'm being really good. And they were like, no, come to my office. And they asked the same questions. It's... It's actually kind of commonly asked, and at the, the first time I was asked, I was really nervous, and I was like, I don't know what to say. And I was like, I don't know what you want me to say, and he said exactly that. Just tell me the truth. Booney, we're friends. Tell me the truth. What are we doing here? And I did, and he was like, great. I'm cool. And then I had it happen with another owner where he came to me and was like, I need to know what's going on, and I need to know what you think. And 
They, my the first time I called my agent, they said the same thing that Jay said. You need to tell him the truth. Number one, you don't know what he's thinking. He could be fucking with you. He could be fucking with the coach. He's like, he's just trying to get in. It, like, and that's the one thing, and we say this a lot, and we tell our guys all the time, is don't ever lie. If you don't like something that no one else likes, that's fucking fine. We're all different. But if you lie and something transpires because of that and everyone finds out that it came back to you because you don't know what's being said behind your room. Like the minute the owner pulled me in, I was like, this is this is real. And he was like, oh, why don't you tell me about that coach? You like him? Think we should keep him? I was oh, like, dude. oh, man, this is interesting. <laughs> this is interesting. Woo. Hello. I go, this is way above my pay grade. And he was like, no, so it's not. Far. He's like, no, it's not. You're with him all day. Tell me about him. I'm going to tell him the truth. I love him. Co- I think coach, he's a great uh, dude. What coach, uh, what coach are you talking about? No, coach. They, they don't ask you to stutter in there. They ask you to sit up straight and be real, real with yeah. them because they're like, hey, I'm making a real decision and I need to fucking know right now. And you're like, and it was in that moment that I was like, I love him. I think he works as hard as everybody else here, if not harder. And yeah. I think it's fucking only right that he stays. I think the guys love him and I think at times things happen and it is what it is. But the dude's a motherfucking dog. And that's what leads boys. Like you send the dogs out first and then the, we come following after it. It, it's dude it was a very scary moment because you're like dude this is this is a lot on me and i don't i don't want to say the wrong thing and then i get cut right like you don't yeah, know it, what's going on especially because i know dude it's hard dude sometimes and people are like oh it's so it's so easy to be in the nfl you're like it's not a lot of it is questions that you're like don't fuck this answer up well and, and, and oh, at the same time it like it goes against every fiber of your being as an alignment of like right we die as one we live as one. oh yeah like no For bus sure. throwing like the whole bit and then when you get singled out by a position of severe influence that has a, a complete power over your career, your livelihood. Like it's really hard to flip the switch from like, I protect all the boys no matter what to like, I got to protect myself here a little bit. Yeah. Like I have to, I have to be a little bit selfish in this moment for my career to continue or else I could be the one that's going to end up falling on the sword for no reason. Right. Like yeah. it's just, it's a, an impossible position to be in. It really is. But somebody has got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> great responsibility yeah, it is it's fun man that was one of the best dumb football questions that's ever been asked by tony yeah. owens right there thank Who'd you tony it led to like 12 minutes of amazing stories um uh, if you guys haven't already clicked the like button and the subscribe button please help us out by doing so on the o-line committee youtube channel and be on the lookout for another film review here as well and if you're not following us all across any social media platform at o-line committee on Twitter and X, on Instagram. So uh, hit us up. That's Alex Boone, Jeremiah Searles. I'm Phil Mackey. We'll see you next time on the O-Line Committee.